you make a promise. You make a promissory note to make payments. And this is painful for some. It could be even devastating, but I believe God wants to free every one of you this morning. He wants me to be free. He wants this church family to be free. And in fact, if we were debt-free, all of us in our own personal finances, I believe we'd have no restriction on what we could do for the Lord. We'd be so freed up. And remember, the borrower is servant to the lender. So what does the Bible say in the New Testament about borrowing and owing? Romans 13 and verse... 6. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to upon whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. As I shared in the early service, uh, as I looked at different commentaries and Bible resources, I often came to newer ones that quickly said that verse 8 doesn't mean what it says. And I will no longer consult those commentaries. Because when a commentary says the Bible doesn't mean what it says and then has to extrapolate some other meaning or answer, I don't believe they're being faithful to the Scripture. The first rule of scriptural interpretation is to take it at, first, at face value <clears throat> unless that is not consistent with the scriptures and then you begin to look for the, the meanings. But when the Bible says, oh no man anything, again it's like the drinking and the borrowing. If you don't owe anyone, that's the very best position you can be. But you are to owe something to somebody and it's to owe love one to another. Every day. You know what? Instead of a national debt counter, we ought to have a Christian love counter and it ought to be running that fast. We ought to be owing people love out of control because we're out amongst people, we're caring. Uh, what we're wanting to do with this Thanksgiving uh, home uh, meal giveaway, uh, that's showing love, the love of Christ. We're wanting to take food to others in Jesus' name and say, tell them Jesus died for you and we care about you. You have value and even though no one else cares about you, we care about you because Jesus first loved us. We are to have a debt of love and guess what? You'll never pay it up. You'll always have one more person to love. So that's a good type of debt. That's the debt God gets excited about. But rather than owing people love, we owe this person, this bank, this person, this situation. And it, it causes us to be in bondage. It causes us to not be able to do all that God would have us to be, both in families, as a church body, and I believe as a nation. Uh, this counter is going to keep clicking and one day uh, it will stop because we cannot even service the interest debt and then things will be in a world of trouble for us. Now I, I promised you some application. How if I'm here this morning and I have debt either through bad choices or maybe a, an emergency and I'm going to use one debt that, that uh, my wife and I incurred, we incurred tens of thousands of dollars of debt during her illness with cancer. Uh, unavoidable. I mean, just those bills, all of you have had those crazy hospital things where you get this one letter, you go, wow, that's a lot, and then you, that's not the only letter. And then you get one from the anesthesiologist, then you get one from the surgical suite, and then you get one from somebody that just, again, wants your money, and you end up with tens of thousands of dollars, and and you just pay it. You, you do something. You say, just add it. And we kind of joke about our bill at Golden Valley. Um, we've had x-ray, ER things, and we just add it to the bill, add it to the bill, add it to the bill. Now, fortunately, those medical bills typically are at zero interest. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen? Because uh, it would just be overwhelming. If they had 21%, 24% interest, uh, I, we couldn't deal with that. But I wanted to give you some wisdom that's from Scripture, and also it's from a very, uh, very uh, credible source. And many of you, if I mention the name Larry Burkett, 
You'll remember Larry Burkett had a radio program for over 20 years on Christian radio called Crown Financial Concepts. And he was referring to the crown as the king, Jesus, and the Bible's direction for how we're to live our life monetarily with our money. Larry Burkett was an outstanding Christian uh, uh, church member at the church he attended in Atlanta, Georgia. He was very wise. Uh, he was a former aerospace engineer who was saved, and then he got into Christian counseling uh, regarding money. And he began a national ministry, radio program, uh, their website, Crown Financial Ministries. You can go to that. Uh, just Google that, crownfinancial.org or .com, and you'll, you'll see Christian resources to help you get out of debt. Now, rather than make a plug for him, I'm just saying that some of these things I'm sharing are not original to me. And I always want to give credit to others for what they've done and, and what they've been able to uh, help me with. And Larry Burkett, if you ever listen to his radio broadcast for long, he said the same thing every time someone would call. You know, they'd go next caller and they'd say, Larry, you know, uh, my car won't run and I, you know, don't have any money in the bank, so is it okay to borrow money now? And he would give them the same, ex you know, same answer each time. And almost after listening to a while, I could answer the caller's calls like I was Larry Burkett. I'd say, oh wait, the four principles, do this, 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 and this, and you'll, you'll you know, next caller. And uh, uh, I want to share with you those four simple principles he gave. They're easy to remember if you're the type that would write these down. The first step in getting out of debt, and, and when I say get out of debt, I'm saying get out of bondage because the borrower is servant to the lender or slave. So if you get out of debt, you're getting out of bondage and you're becoming more free. And I believe even on Veterans Day, our men and women have fought for freedom. And yet, many are in bondage today, even though it's not from an enemy power, it's from our own lack of good stewardship and wise use of money. So what's the first step in getting out of debt and getting out of bondage? The first step Larry Burkett always encouraged the listeners was to transfer the ownership of everything you have to the Lord. And he means everything. Your, your children, your home, your job, your savings accounts, everything I have belongs to God. And it's failure here that leads to the other problems. The reason that we don't have a national uh, responsibility is because we don't truly believe that God is, that we'll have to answer to Him one day. We, we think we can just run and do whatever, that we can violate scriptural principles and then somehow not have to answer for it. But every one of us will give an account of himself to God. So transfer the ownership of everything you have to the Lord. And number two, Larry Burkett would always ask the listeners, are you giving God his part? And he was referring to what? Tithing and offerings. And that's an important principle. And he would often quote Malachi chapter 3. Let's turn there to Malachi 3 on his second of four keys to becoming debt free and having your freedom back. Malachi chapter 3 in the Old Testament. Larry Burkett would say, how are you giving the Lord his part? Malachi 3, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. I believe the Lord holds us accountable. If he's blessed you with any, anything, you need to return to him a portion of that by faith. 10% uh, uh, is a, a start, the tithe, but it's the offerings and, and the going beyond that. Uh, I like to call tithing preschool for Christians. It's the basic, it's elementary, it's the fundamentals, the ABCs. And when you grow as a Christian, tithing will kind of be in the rearview mirror and you'll be doing far more than that but you won't be legalistic about it. You won't have to say 10% or 12%. You'll be able to grow and mature. Now here's a caution. And by the way, Larry Burkett went home to be with the Lord about 12 years ago. He had cancer. He's, he's with Christ. 
but his principles live on because he would challenge people, if you do not give the Lord his portion, you did not do.